G'day, welcome back to Built by Dan. I'm Dan, thanks for checking out my channel. If you're enjoying these episodes and would like to follow along as I build my first project car, please hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you get notified of future releases. So, as I stated in my last episode, the direction that we've chosen to take on this GT40 build is somewhat of a modern take on a classic race car supercar. A modern and lightweight chassis and suspension setup for improved handling with a reliable modern drivetrain, all packaged up in the classic styling of the original GT40 body and interior. I honestly believe that that's going to give us the best of both worlds. There are a number of customizable specifications for the kit that we chose, so I thought I'd run you through at a high level what they were and what we decided to go with. The reason I chose the kit manufacturer that I did was largely due to their chassis and suspension setup. Some kits come with a tubular, mild steel or even stainless steel space frame chassis Whereas the kit that I've gone with comes with a more modern, lightweight, aluminium, semi-monocoque chassis. This modern chassis design, coupled with the suspension setup, I believe, will provide improved stability and handling over the tubular space frame chassis. The kit that we have ordered has been optioned with an upgraded full carbon composite body with a custom gel coat finish. In terms of colour, I started off wanting a full golf racing replica. That included the light blue body, orange stripe and all the race decals. Unfortunately my partner didn't really like the golf colour scheme and since this was a project that we both wanted to work on together, we wanted to find a colour that we both liked. We both liked the Nardo grey colour in general but I didn't really see it working on the GT40 body. But nevertheless, I needed to at least explore the idea and see what it might actually look like before discounting it as a potential colour. I jumped onto Google and did a quick search for some GT40 images and found a number of golf racing colour scheme cars. And I start, used that as a starting point to start playing around with some photo editing software to see what a grey coloured body might look like. Uh, I thought it might be an easy sort of colour transition to work with the light blue and transitioning that to a grey within the, the software. After playing around with a number of different shades of grey, finally landed on one that I just fell in love with. Um, I honestly didn't think that the grey that we were thinking would look so good on the GT40 body. So here's a picture of it. Needless to say, we knew straight away that we, once we both agreed on the colour, that that's the colour we're going to go with. So added a few orange GT40 stripes or the golf racing style stripes um, to stick with that sort of heritage, tying back to the heritage I suppose, while still having a modern sort of grey colour. Uh, that you see on a lot of the, the current supercars. Uh, we still wanted to, to link it back to the GT40's heritage and I felt that the orange stripes would be the best way to do that as well as maintaining the orange centres on the wheels. So here's an image that I prepared of what our final colour specification and decals will look like. Moving on to the engine. There are a number of engine options that are available for a GT40 kit car. You see kit cars getting around with the Chevy engines, Ford engines, or even Lexus V8 engines. In order to meet our local engineering and emissions requirements, I need an engine that's relatively modern and also wanted something modern anyway because I want that reliability. I don't want to constantly be having to have the car or the engine fixed because it's unreliable or it won't start because it's sat for too long uh, because I just don't have that mechanical ability to be able to service it myself. Being a replica of probably what the most iconic Ford vehicle ever produced, uh, I couldn't bring myself to put anything other than a Ford engine in it. Although I have heard of a local builder putting a twin turbo Ferrari V8 into his GT40 build. Probably just to stick it up the purists. And if that's the case, I love that. But I don't have the money to purchase a Ferrari engine to do the same sort of thing. 
So given that I wanted to put a Ford engine in and I needed a modern Ford engine, I've decided to go with the Gen 2 Coyote out of the current Mustang. Uh, that'll meet all the emissions requirements and provide the reliability that I'm after. And in order to try and tie that back to the original GT40 car and engine, uh, I've gone with an eight stack injection uh, to provide that original sort of classic engine styling, I suppose, um, when you're looking at the engine bay from outside the vehicle. So whilst I know where I want to go on the engine, I haven't yet found the right builder for that engine. Um, so it's something I'm still working on, but there's no rush there. If you've got plenty of time, plenty of work ahead of us to actually start assembling the vehicle before we need to be test fitting or installing the engine. In relation to the transmission, or transaxle in this case, there, again, there are a number of options that you can go with, depending on the sort of horsepower that you intend to make. Now obviously the transmission is not going to make you any horsepower, but it needs to be able to transfer that horsepower to the wheels and to the ground. It seemed to me that the most popular choice for transaxle in the GT40 was the Porsche G50 gearbox. But they also seem to be quite expensive, because there seems to be quite a demand for them. After doing some research, I found that the Graziano gearbox out of the Lamborghini Gallardo and the Audi R8 would cost a similar amount to purchase and build and would also be able to hold a decent amount of horsepower. It also comes in a six speed, which I liked. So that's what we decided to go with for our transaxle selection. Now, having run through these specifications with you, is this going to be our final spec? Well, yeah, I think it will be. I mean, we may make some minor changes to the car along the way, but we've undertaken a lot of research on these items already, so I'm pretty confident that we'll be sticking to them. And that brings us to the end of this episode. In the next episode, we'll be looking to get this garage set up, ready for the kit to arrive. There's a little bit of work to do, and obviously you've only seen this tool chest behind me, but there is a bit more to it. Uh, we've got some racking around the place, uh, tools and bits and pieces that I want to relocate into another garage, I uh, want to epoxy the floor, so in the next video we'll be covering all of that. It's probably going to take a couple of weeks really um, to work through that whole pro build process of cleaning out the garage, cleaning the floor, letting it dry, epoxy, letting that dry, and then moving everything back in. So stay tuned and uh, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching this episode. If you like this episode, please hit the like button. If you have any comments or feedback, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Look forward to having you tune in to the next episode.